Hello and welcome back to this series on named entity recognition for the purposes of the D of digital humanities. In the uh, last video, I showed you how to create, uh, take a blank spacing model, create a pipe, add a label to that pipe, and then save that model to disk. I probably shouldn't have used the word model. And the reason for this is very simple. There actually isn't a model in here. If we look at it in the folder, you go to the uh, concentration camp NER that we added in, you'll not see, you'll see that there is no model. In order to actually get a model into this NER, you need to train it. And that's what we're going to be focusing on in this video. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to 03 underscore training underscore model, and we're going to start trying to train a model with some of the functions that we worked with in the last video. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import a couple things. We're going to import Spacey. We are going to import JSON, which I'll explain in just a moment. And we're going to import random. Random is going to be used to randomize the training process. For this video, I have underneath data, I have some training data that I have cultivated for my own personal work. And what this is, is annotated texts uh, that are Holocaust documents. And they've been annotated with concentration camps marked. So Ber uh, Bergen Belsen, et cetera, on down the list. And you'll see that this is the way that I talked about in an earlier video that Spacey expects training data as a list with lists that contain an index zero, the text itself, index two, the dictionary with one key that corresponds to a value that is a list with the beginning and ending of the entity and the label corresponding to it. If you don't remember all of that, I recommend going back and re-watching the video earlier in the series when I talked about how to uh, train a spacey model. Let's jump back in over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to import that training data by writing a very simple function for loading JSON data. I always do this in all of my uh, Python scripts. I have uh, uh, this functions that I've got preloaded on my stream deck that I just uh, load in, but for this purpose, I'm going to type it all out. We're going to open up the file. We're going to do it as R. It's encoded in UTF-8. Good practice there. UTF-8 or UTF-16 as F. And then we're going to do simply data is going to be equal to JSON.load. And then we're going to return the data. If you're not familiar with how JSON files work, I do have a whole series on JSON files that I encourage you to watch and get comfortable with. And that's going to allow me to simply import my training data. We're going to do that in just a second, though. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a function for training our spacing model. Now, even though we created this Holocaust underscore NER in the last video, we're going to override it for the purposes of this video. And the reason for doing that is because we need to have that spacing model actually have an NER model in it to use it. So that's what we're going to work on right now. So we're going to create a function called train spacey. You can name this whatever you want, but it's going to take two arguments. It's going to take the data, which is going to be the training data. Actually, let's just make this train data. And then we're going to do also iterations. And that's going to be the amount of times that we want to train the model. It's always good practice to have that worked into a keyword argument so you can experiment with different uh, amounts of iterations or epochs so you know when your model is overfitting. If you're not familiar with the training process of machine learning, I encourage you to check out my video series on machine learning for the purposes of digital humanities, where I explain all of the concepts of, um, of machine learning in simple, easy to understand terms. What we're going to do here in this function is we're going to create a blank model just like we did last time. So we're going to create a spacey.blank and we're going to make it an English model. Now what we're going to do, and this should look very familiar because we did all this in the last video, we're going to say NER is equal to NLP.create pipe. And we're going to say that we want that to be the factory NER. So it knows how to handle it. And then we're going to say NER.add label. And we're going to make sure that conk camp is worked into that uh, NER model as a label. And then we're going to finally say NLP dot add pipe. And just like last time, we're going to say NER. So passing that NER obje object that we saw in the last video and the name, once again, we're just going to stick with conk underscore camp underscore NER. Wonderful. Now it comes time to use what we saw in an even earlier video on training. This is going to be a slightly modified version of all of that. So here's where we're going to start the training process. We're going to say other pipes. This is unnecessary, but it's going to be useful if you are 
working with multiple pipes in your NER. So in my models, I oftentimes have uh, three, four, five, sometimes even nine different uh, NER models and functions working or pipes working in tandem. Uh, a bit more complicated than what we're working with here, but always good to do this just in case. NLP.pipe underscore names if pipe is not equal to, you guessed it, conk underscore camp underscore NER. Essentially, I, I explained in a previous video, this is just making sure that you're only affecting the pipe at, that you want to affect, that you want to train, which is our conk camp NER pipe. And then we're going to say with NLP dot disable pipes, here's where we're disabling them. We're going to disable the other pipes. And this is just going to make sure that we only affect the one we want to affect, A-F-F-E-C-T. Optimizer is going to be equal to NLP dot begin training. This is when we start actually uh, working on the training process. So we're going to say for I ITN in range iterations. And we're going to say uh, print uh, starting iteration. And we're going to, there we are, Let me do this here, make this an F string. And then we're going to say uh, str of itn. And that's going to allow us to actually uh, print off which iteration that we're actually on in the training process. We are going to randomize the training data. And you're going to see that we're going to randomize it before we even put it into this as well. Always good practice to randomize your training data because if you don't, you are going to end up with a model that simply memorizes order and not um, and not the entity. Losses is going to be equal to an empty dictionary. We're going to be adding to that in just a moment. For text annotations and train data, we are going to say nlp.updates. We're going to be grabbing those annotations and grabbing the texts from that list of lists that we saw a second ago. And we are going to pass in a few, um, few arguments here. Text is going to be a list. And we're going to say annotations as a list. Then we're going to say drop is going to be equal to, so this is our dropout, is going to be equal to a float of 0 uh, 0.02, or sorry, 0 0.2, which is going to be 20%, fairly standard introductory dropout rate. SGD is going to be equal to our optimizer. Again, I'm going to explain all of this stuff in a lot more detail in a later video. Uh, but for right now, just kind of put that all in there. It'll, it'll make sense when we actually go through and start training. And again, like I said, I've already covered a lot of this in an earlier video. That's why I'm not um, describing all of this in a lot of detail. Essentially, what this is going to do is it's going to go in and train our NER uh, model, create the model, train it with the training data that we feed into the function. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we're going to create an object down here called train data, and that's going to be equal to JSON. Oh, sorry. It's going to be equal to load data, and that's going to be calling our load data function right here. And we're going to load in past one thing, which is going to be a string, and that's going to be our data backslash. Uh, I have it in here as camp training data dot JSON. So it's going to go in and grab all that, and let's just print off train data zero just to make sure everything's working correctly and we already got an error fantastic so what do we have here lambda uh, requires an additional argument of fp and i just probably forgot to put f in there there we go Oop. there we are now this should work just fine and we see that we got the first annotation which is a list uh, index zero is the text and index uh, one is the dictionary of entities excellent Okay, now that we know that that works, and now comes time to actually call our, our, uh, our function, but we want to do a few other things. I've got around 3,500 annotations in this data set. I'm not going to use all of them for the purposes of this video because it'll take too long to actually record. This is more to demonstrate proof of concept, and then I'm going to show you a more robust and better trained model and how it performs using this exact same process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do random dot shuffle and I'm going to shuffle train data right now. And the reason why I'm shuffling it right now is because these annotations are from sequential documents. And so you'll oftentimes just get one concentration camp mentioned for about five or 10 annotations. And I want to make sure that when I grab a bunch of random stuff from train data, that it's going to actually be, uh, 
it's a more randomized collection of items. And so I'm going to do uh, train data is going to be equal to train data. There's a better way to do this, but I'm just going to do it for this video. And that's going to grab after randomize the first 100, uh, the 100, first 100 indices of that list. And now if I print off train data, oh, you'll see the result. It's going to be a different annotation. And yeah, I can run this each time and it's going to be a different annotation. You'll see that right there. Okay, fantastic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and train a model. So we're going to call this trained is going to be equal to train spacey train data. And we're going to tell it to just learn, go over, we'll do five generations. That might not be enough to achieve what we want to achieve. Uh, but we're going to test the model by putting in this bit of code right here. And this is just going to create a document that we're going to iterate over with that trained model. And I might, I'm going to end the video right here for just a second while we go through the training process. And I'm going to pop back after the training process is complete because I found that it is affected by my recording software. Ah, I got to actually, before I do that, I have named this instead of spacey. Spacey, that's a bad typo there. Uh, and now it should work just fine. And we're going to see the training process taking place. So what this is, is a little uh, test that we put together. I'm going to explain it right now while it's going through and doing the training process. It'll take just a second. So what this is, is a document that comes from a few different uh, Holocaust documents. And it's got two concentration camps in it. Actually, it's got three. Uh, no, it's got two, sorry. It's got Majdanek and Treblinka right here. What we're expecting for our model is to at least be able to identify one of them. I'm not even sure that it's going to be able to do that with the limited amount of training data that I've given it because I've only given it 100 annotations. And again, this is just proof of concept. We'll see another model that has been trained on, I think, 3,500 or 5,000 different annotations and see how well it performs after this is done training and tested. But if it can get one of these, I'll be happy. And it has. It's gotten one of them. It's gotten Treblinka. And we see as the time goes on, the losses get better. Again, with more robust training, the results are going to be better. And to demonstrate that, let me do uh, one thing for you. I'm going to go ahead and bring in and dem show you another model that I have pre-trained for my own personal work. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to also show you what is different about this model. Notice that this actually contains a model within it. Whereas our early, earlier one, our one from the last video, did not. And you'll see it right there. There is no model in the actual NER. So let's go ahead. And now we're going to just comment this out. And we're going to say, I'll change this to NLP. You'll see why in just a sec. We're going to say NLP is equal to spacey.load. And we're going to load in... Um, what are we going to load in? We're going to load in conk camps model. That's going to load in the model that I have pre-trained for this video. And we should see much, much better results. I would expect to see both Majdanek and Treblinka both correctly identified. And in fact, we do. So this model, which was trained on the same annotations, but all 3,500 of them is actually able to perform much, much better. And the reason for that is because the larger quantity of training data that you have um, you'll see an increase in the performance of your model. There is a point where that starts to peter off, but overall, you should have gathered from this video uh, a, a basic way to take the model that we created in the last video, repeat some of those steps to actually go through and train it, and by, and by doing so, creating the model as well, and then training it, and then actually seeing it perform. If you have annotated training data, that is in the range of probably 500 to 1,000, you'll see good results. If you have in the range of 1,000 to 10,000, you'll see great results. And it's when you start getting above 10,000 that your return starts to become less, but that's when you get into the state-of-the-art range with models. Again, all this is going to depend on the type of entity that you're trying to identify and the challenges of, of identifying it. But for the most part, that's a general good rule of thumb. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe down below. In the next video, we're going to start showing you how to take this model, 
which has no word vectors and introduce robust Holocaust specific word vectors into it and then retrain it on all 3,500 annotations to then show you how to get a much better model that can perform better and generalize better on unseen data. That's going to be it for this video though. Thank you for listening.